Quebec delivered a strong response to Boeing and the U.S. this morning, saying you may have won this battle, but we will win the war. Late yesterday, the U.S. imposed a 220% duty on Bombardier C-Series jets. Now, that's nearly three times the tariff that Boeing had actually asked for in their trade complaint. Bombardier is calling the size of the duty absurd. So what is Quebec's next step, and how will it ramp up pressure on the U.S. to reverse the move? Joining me now from New York, Jean-Claude Lozon. He is the Delegate General at the Quebec government's office in New York. Sir, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. What uh, directions do you have from Premier Couillard now that this decision has, has come down? What will you be doing to counter this decision in New York? Well, we have been working very hard for the last nine months, David, on this, on this file with Bombardier, with, of course, the embassy in, in Washington, and also the, uh, the Ontario government. And uh, the, this decision today, or yesterday, uh, does not surprise us. We were preparing for this, and we will continue to do the work that we've been doing, uh, which is to get the Americans and the Department of Commerce to understand and appreciate that this thing is a North American issue. It's not a Quebec issue. We make things together. 56% of the parts of the C-Series are American. And there are more than 27,000 jobs in the U.S. that are directly related to the C-Series. So it's very important that everyone understand in Washington, whether it's Congress, whether it's the representatives, the senators, and also in the 12 states where Bombardier has employees in the U.S., that this is extremely important and this decision we are extremely disappointed with, but as Mr. Cuillard said this morning, the, ba the battle is not over. What's important is February 1 for the, the decision date, mm -hmm. and of course we'll be working very hard this month on the decision that will be taken at the end of this month. Okay, so the, at the crux of this is an allegation of subsidies, which the Quebec government has denied, but what do you say to the argument that the billion dollar investment in, in uh, Bombardier in 2016 was a subsidy and there's money there from the feds as well? Well, first of all, it's not a subsidy and this is the thing that we've been fighting. The Quebec government has taken an equity position in the C-Series. So it's not giving money to, to, uh, to Bombardier as a subsidy. It is becoming a partner, 50% or 49.5% of the equity part of the C-Series. And the government of Canada has given a loan. In other words, they have not given a, a subsidy. And this is where we're fighting uh, extremely hard to get the Americans to understand that those two elements are not subsidies. They're a business decision and they're a good business decision on the most important R&D project in Canada at the moment. Right, but subsidies can come in many forms, and the argument would be that an investment like this, plus the loan from the federal government, is really just a subsidy from another, in, in another means. Well, a subsidy is uh, something that is given to you. A loan, if you have a mortgage on your house, David, you need to repay the bank. So it's the same thing with the loan that the government of Canada has done with Bombardier. And with regard to the equity position, the government of Quebec decided to go that route, because it felt it wanted to have a stake in the, in the development of the C-Series, and that's the best way we found for us to, to make sure that we were A, supporting the company, and B, having something at stake in the, in the future. So it's not a subsidy, and this is something that uh, we have clarified many times, and we will continue to clarify that point extremely strongly in Washington, and again, in the 12 states, we, we have wonderful supports from American senators, governors, representatives, and, and you've seen around the world uh, uh, today. What's your sense of the sheer size of the countervailing duty they put in of 220 percent? I mean, the complaint from Boeing was looking for around 80 percent. 220 is a lot higher than 80 percent. What do you make of that decision by the Commerce Department? Well, the, first of all, the Department of Commerce, when there is a complaint of that nature, nine times out of ten, and you saw the declaration of Madame Freeland this morning, nine times out of ten in the first uh, uh, information or the first uh, uh, results that they give is always favorable to the company and the plaintiff. So we knew that the nine chance out of ten we would have the decision that we have today. 220% is a very strong message and a very bad message. And uh, this is something that we will fight extremely hard 
we knew that this was coming again. Again, we've been preparing for this for nine months. And, uh, and we want to make sure that the Americans understand the, uh, the issue that is at stake here. We're talking about the most efficient plane in the 100-seat category in the world at the moment. This is a product that no one else has done, whether it's Boeing, whether it's Airbus, whether it's Embraer. It's a unique product, and there's no, there's, I, I, the proof in the matter is the fact that Boeing is seeing this as a potential threat for its future, but they, they have no product that match this market at the moment. This is the thing that really puzzled off and, uh, uh, us, and this is what we will get to the bottom of in, uh, in the next couple of weeks. And as you've seen, the Premier and the two opposition leaders in the Assembly this morning have indicated that they're prepared to come to Washington with us and in my office in Washington to go and meet with the, with the representatives and the leaders of uh, the Department of Commerce. What do you think Quebec might do uh, in response to this decision at home? There is some, some Boeing uh, employees uh, across the country, some based in Montreal. What kind of action do you think the Quebec government might take domestically? Well, the, uh, Quebec, Quebec is, uh, and the message of the Premier is very simple. Quebec is open for business. We're a fair trade uh, uh, province. Canada is a fair trade and very open for business, as you know. We have huge investments going on in Canada at the moment with, uh, with regard to infrastructure. One of the largest infrastructure projects in Canada is the Champlain Bridge in Montreal, the busiest bridge in, in Canada. And the case the depot is about to launch its train, its uh, urban train, which will be the fourth largest project of that substance in the world. So we are open to American companies and foreign companies to come in and bid for those projects. We're extremely open and we want to continue to send a message to our American friends that this is what we're doing. But of course, uh, if we are playing with a player that doesn't want to play the game, we will have to ask ourselves some questions and see what we can do. There are about $300 billion of investment in infrastructure over the next 10 years in Canada. This is a huge prize for American companies wanting to get access to that market. So there are many ways for us to, uh, to play the game. As you know, there's the Super Ornit project, which is about $10 billion with Boeing that uh, Justin Trudeau has clearly indicated that he's prepared to, uh, to, to pull the plug on this one if Boeing is not playing the game appropriately. Okay. So we have some arguments that uh, we want to tend to our American friends, but at the same time, we don't, get, we don't want to get into the retaliation process as, at this moment. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Jean-Claude Lozon, thank you so much. Thank you.